we're going to look at the valence band from these copper nanoparticles. And since the valence band spectra will include the a signal from the graphitic part of this material, the first job that we need to do is work out how to subtract from the valence band spectra an appropriate valence band spectrum from graphite. So the way we're going to do this is to calculate a proportion that is required for each one of these measurements that to remove from the valence band from the copper nanoparticle valence band spectra the graphitic form. So we'll begin by defining some regions on the set of carbon S spectra from the copper nanoparticles and also from a graphite sample that is a standard material for which we have both the C1S and the valence band. So having calculated these areas, we can now work out a ratio for each one of these measurements that will tell us how much we need to remove from the valence band the, an amount of graphitic signal. So we'll do this by having calculated uh, what the area is for the graphitic peak. We can now work out the ratio for all of these nano particles on the graphite and this gives us a table which we can now use to calculate uh, a, a appropriate formulae that can be used in the spectrum calculator in CASA XPS. So that's the table. Now let's have a look at what we've got here. What we need to do is organize the valence band data so that we can use the calculator effectively. So we'll copy it to a new file and we'll also gather the valence band for the graphite. This corresponds to the C1S graphite signal that we use to calculate these ratios. And so we now have, and we need to see what the VB index might be for these data. So we'll go to the view menu and we will enable the display of the VB indices in the right hand side. So we can see the graphite is VB0 and the the copper nanoparticle valence bands will be in VB1 to VB17. So what we need to do is create a list of numbers and we'll do that in Excel by simply incrementing and if we copy this list of formulae we will have a list going 1 to 17 and that corresponds to the VB1 to VB17 in the VAMAS file. And now what we need to do is subtract from each one of these VB1 for example a, the right proportion of VB0 which is the graphitic valence band. So we'll concatenate VB with the index and then we will also have a string that says minus VB0 times and then it'll be the amount that we've calculated. So we need to now indicate the right amount for the for VB1 and then we've got ourselves a formula which tells us how to calculate uh, the copper valence band in the absence of graphite and if we copy this formula all the way down this list we've now got a set of formulae that we can now copy and paste into the spectrum processing option on the calculator property page there's expression which means that we can enter these expressions and then calculate from this file a set of valence band spectra that have been modified to remove a proportion of graphite and now you can see that we've got all of these that are nicely organized without the graphite so having done that what we'll do is we'll just use PCA to make sure that there really are only two forms, two shapes within these data and that's what PCA is telling us though and we will use two abstract factors to reproduce these data to in an attempt to remove noise and what we'll take is the first and the last in the sequence and we will now perform a sequence of different spectra so that we can then remove one from the other and see what's left. So it's it's now a case of scanning through these data and the idea is to find a valence band spectrum 
that looks very much like it is the 2 plus and the position within this table will correspond closely to how we calculated our 2 plus for the copper 2p so this is really what we're doing we're trying to find a corresponding spectrum to what we found to be the copper 2p and having found one we'll copy it and then we'll look again and we won't need to find a corresponding valence band spectrum to the copper 1 plus that we calculated for the copper 2p so we'll move down and we'll look for a shape that looks plausible and this is an iterative process you'd have to do this several times and assess how well your choices have been made and how physically meaningful they are so we've now in this case got two shapes and they definitely have a difference in appearance and what we want to do now is copy these two shapes and we'll also copy the shape for the graphitic valence band so that we can now perform a fit of three shapes the two we've calculated and a graphitic form uh, to the original data so what we need to do is overlay let's have a first of all let's have a look at the three forms that we're going to use to fit to the data and though, so we have graphite and two calculated spectra these are the data that we want to fit so we need to overlay in the active tile the three basis functions then we're going to select the functions to which we want to do a fit and generate spectra so now we've got a file that contains in each row the least squares solution so we can step up and down this and you can now see that these three shapes when combined in a linear least square sense reproduce the entire data set so that's quite reassuring so let's first of all mark up the block ID so that we can use this to when we overlay data see which ones which so we'll each column will assign a, a representative string so that's the one we think might be copper one plus and they'll be similar for the two plus the graphite the processed and the raw data so the process being the linear sum of the three other forms in the right proportions so we'll just display this and we'll display it using a draw key index so we can now see that we've got raw data calculated spectrum which really overlay very well and the three functional forms that are put together to get that calculated data so the next thing we would like to do is try and understand what these might mean in terms of oxidation states so what we can do is use a step down function to calculate the position of when intensity comes up from essentially a, a background of zero uh, at the Fermi edge so or in and around the Fermi edge so here we start to see signal from one of these at 0.85 and that's fitting a, a step down function and we'll do the same with the second form of the valence band calculated and we'll fit that just make a few adjustments and we'll look at the and that's 0.67 for the position so what we need to do now is compare this against a metallic form of the valence band so we actually have this in the other file we can go and find a metallic form of copper and we need the valence band what we'd like to do is the same calculation so we'll take that through to the other file so we can do a, a direct comparison and having copied the copy the uh, the metallic form into this file we can now do the same calculation put a step down function on this and see where the valence band appears now all of these data both the copper nanoparticle and the valent and the metallic were measured on the same instrument with the samples electrically in contact with the instrument so we have the same work function for both measurements or all, th all of these measurements and so we would like to think that this is in some way representative of the, the um, materials 
if we look at this position where the signal starts to uh, emerge from the above zero we should we should get a representative feeling of where these materials relate in with respect to to the metallic form of copper so having done this let's just organize the data so we can see this clearly let's um, find these values that we calculated and there's one there's the other that's the metallic we'll display all of them we'll use a tile a page tile format uh, so we can display all three of these at once and well need to see them in a slightly different way so let's see that so there you go now you can see that we actually have three different positions for this rise in the signal so we believe now that we have two forms that we've calculated that are different from the metallic form of copper.